Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be doing an unboxing and review of the Amazon Basics 10-port USB 3.0 hub. My use case may be a little different than others. Uh, I plan on using this hub to actually provide additional USB ports for my Nintendo Switch. The dock station only comes with two ports, and I need a lot more than just two for my multiple charging docks, as well as for my Super Smash Bros. GameCube adapters. So I plan to use this to directly provide more USB ports through my Nintendo Switch. So let's see how this goes. This is actually one of my first Amazon Basics products, and just looking at the packaging, it seems very simple and straightforward. There's not too much from an outside standpoint that's going to help lower costs, so it's pretty straightforward and gives you some information about what's inside. Once opened, you can see the instruction manual on top. Moving that out of the way, we can gain access to our hub itself. Seems like a pretty decent build quality. Metal top, some rubber feet on the bottom to help it not slide as much. We have some fast charge ports in the front. And then we have some ports on the sides and then back as well. Inside the box includes a power cable, power brick, and USB 3.0 adapter to provide data access. The power brick itself is actually kind of large. It's almost the same size of the hub. It almost seems like a smaller version of a laptop charging brick, which is a little disappointing. I do know it's an Amazon Basics product, but I wish it was a little smaller. The instruction manual gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to plug it into power as well as the different interfaces on the hub itself and how to plug it into your computer. In the manual is some troubleshooting steps as well. If you run into any issues, you can consult the manual to see if your issues are covered. Okay, so now that I have everything unboxed, it's time to go ahead and plug everything into the Nintendo Switch. For me, I plan on plugging the hub into the dock ports, so that way anytime I decide to dock my Nintendo Switch, it'll be able to gain full access to the hub without having to mess around with any wires, and that way all the docks can be plugged in. I do also plan to use the standalone power, so that way if any of the peripherals need to be charged on the docks, they are able to do so without having the Nintendo Switch on. I also decided, since it has a standalone power supply, to check out just how much power it's going to use for the hub itself when not being used by any other devices. Plugging it in, it spikes up to about 1.5 watts and then kind of stabilizes and drops down to half a watt, which I personally don't find to be that bad, uh, but it is just idle power, powering the LED on the hub and any other internals of the hub. So something to keep in mind if you are trying to keep an eye on your power budget, that the hub being powered on its own will draw some power even when not being used by anything whatsoever. And then I'm actually going to use the back ports for my two Super Smash Bros. GameCube adapters. There's no real rhyme or reason. Uh, most of the ports are pretty much, or I believe all the ports are the same. I just wanted to put them on the back so they're kind of out of the way because those should never get changed or moved around. Whereas the other devices on the front might get changed out for higher capacity charging docks or some other accessories in the future. <laughs> Next up is going to be the 4 Joy-Con power adapter by Power A. This allows you to charge up to 4 Joy-Cons, as the name suggests, on a single dock. The cord itself for the dock is a little shorter than I like, but Luckily, everything is going to be close by, so that's not a big deal. Okay. 
now with the hub plugged into the Nintendo Switch dock, but with the no Nintendo Switch on the dock, so that means no power should really be running to it, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a Joy-Con and see if it works as expected. And I immediately get a red light telling me that the Joy-Con is not charged fully, so let's go ahead and do another one. Apparently this angle is kind of hard to get them plugged in. There we go. And then both are indicating that they are charging. So that is a good plus so far. As honestly expected, there's no data transfer to charge. Um, the, the bigger question I have is if this is going to work is really going to be for the Super Smash Brothers USB adapters for the GameCube controllers. Those I hope will work and honestly the primary reason why I bought this hub was so that I could do multiple GameCube adapters and have full rumble functions within the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so the moment of truth for me, finding out if this Amazon Basics hub will work with the Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately, I only have two GameCube controllers right now a WaveBird and a wired GameCube controller. So I'm gonna use the WaveBird on one of the adapters and then I'm gonna use the wired controller on the other adapter. While this won't be able to give me full testing, uh, this should be enough at least to determine if the hub is going to function as I would expect and hope that it will. Okay, so once I get my battle set up, it looks like the first controller in the first hub works, and it looks like the second controller in the second hub works. Uh, I didn't have to do anything special, it just kind of detected it and worked, which is awesome and as I had hoped. So let's go ahead and get a battle started to test out the responsiveness of the different controllers through the hub and on the different adapters themselves. So at first pass it does seem like the three controllers are it's responsive. The third controller outside of the two GameCube controllers is just a uh, Nintendo Switch Pro controller. But the two GameCube controllers seem to be just as responsive as the Pro Controller, which is great. And then I'm just going to kind of mess around a little. But to me, this kind of seems like it is a perfect fit if you're looking to add more ports to your Nintendo Switch and be able to provide power for such a use case as the Super Smash Bros. GameCube adapter, then this is probably your best choice. It's a very low price point and provides all the features that you would be looking for within a hub. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Positive feedback helps encourage me to keep making new content that you see here. Please also make sure to subscribe to the channel for all new videos coming out soon. Thank you very much.